Hi, I'm Tim Altman, respiratory therapist, naturopath, medical therapist. Today I'm going to talk about breathing, and a question that often gets asked is, how do I breathe when I'm exercising? Um, there's two parts to this answer. The first one relates to um, where do we breathe into and out of. A lot of people, or we, most of us, get taught when we were younger to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, or when it's really, really difficult, in and out through your mouth. Um, firstly, the thing about breathing in and out, in through the nose and out through the mouth, where you're breathing at low levels, is actually wrong. We're, we've actually been taught wrong. Um, that can work, but it actually doesn't work anywhere near as efficiently as breathing in and out through your nose. Um, so, basically, the way our respiratory system is put together, it's far more efficient to breathe in and out through the nose. And when you start breathing out through the mouth or in through the mouth, you actually breathe out far too much volume of air. Up to six times the volume of air can go in and out through your mouth than it can through your nostrils, obviously, because it's a bigger hole. So um, what happens is when we have too much volume going in and out, it upsets the balance or the, there's a really delicate balance in our, um, in our respiratory system in the in the in the body, basically in the blood vessels and that, that transport oxygen from the lungs, from the air, basically from the lungs or from the air in our lungs towards our cells for energy production. And when we breathe too much air, we upset the delicate biochemistry that dictates how efficiently we get oxygen into the cells for energy production. So we actually don't want too much volume of air. And when you start using your mouth to breathe, you mess that up. It's all dictated by a thing called the Bohr effect, which I, um, I won't go too much into today. I love to talk about it. There are those who um, laugh at me when I go start raving on about the Bohr effect, but it actually, the Bohr effect dictates how efficiently we get oxygen from our air and our lungs to our cells for energy production. And obviously when we're exercising, we're working harder, we want more energy production. And that's gonna make us far better, far more efficient when we're exercising. So if you breathe in, through the nose, out through the mouth. It's nowhere near as efficient as in and out through the nose. You might then ask, well, how the hell am I gonna do that at higher levels of exercise? The first thing, the first answer to that is that your brain over time will get used to it. So when, we, um, when we're experiencing difficulty when we're exercising, so you're out going for a run and you <gasps> huff and puff through your mouth and that discomfort you feel where you feel like you've got to suck in more air, it's actually not your body's telling you you've got to suck in more air. It's actually your brain having difficulty handling the amount of carbon dioxide that's in your bloodstream. Now, we, our body produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct of energy production, and it, then when we exhale carbon dioxide, and it's actually carbon dioxide that dictates, dictates how efficiently we get oxygen into our, our cells for energy production. So as our CO2 levels go up, our brain's not used to it, and it wants us to breathe more rapidly. So we think we need to suck in more air. But the trap is that if we do that, we suck in more in, air in and out through our mouths, we actually make ourselves less efficient. So over time, you can train your brain to handle more carbon dioxide over time. It takes time. So when you first try this, if you were to try and go and exercise at high levels now using nose only, you'll find it really tough. In fact, you'll hyperventilate using your nose and you'll probably get a headache. Uh, which is what happened the first time I did it. I tried it, I went for a paddle and I taped my mouth shut, which looked pretty strange. And I tried to nose breathe and all I did was hyperventilate it with my nose. But over time, gradually, you can stimulate your body to handle higher and higher levels of CO2 so that over time you can learn to breathe at a lower rate with less volume at higher levels of exercise. And when you do that, you're far more efficient at producing energy and you'll actually find you, you, you go a lot better. Um, another thing you can do is also when you've done, if, you, if it's really hard and you're not used to doing that yet and you've done a really hard exercise where, you know, where you've had to use your mouth to breathe and you're you know, recovering afterwards, then recover using your nose. You know, the classic thing is you see AFL footballers or any person, football, they've done a big sprint and they're then they're resting their hands on their knees, <gasps> mouth open, recovering hard, and you see their mouth guard and what have you. Now, it's actually far more efficient to recover by breathing in and out through your nose. It might be tougher initially, but it's far more efficient. You get more oxygen to your cells for energy production, and you'll help clear out lactic acid, or lactic acid quicker. And I find I, I return to resting heart rate much quicker doing that 
because my system is more efficient. So an, an example, when I first started doing this, I, I gradually, uh, I mentioned that I taped my mouth shut and went out and exercised and just about, you know, I got headaches and <laughs> made it pretty tough. Um, but I, what I did learn to do over time was I was training for a particular race, which is a four hour paddling race called the Molokai to Oahu Challenge. It's a ski paddle race. It's the unofficial world championships of endurance ocean ski paddling. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a high, high, high level race. And, and I've done that twice now. And when I was training for it, I built up over time my ability for my brain to handle carbon dioxide. So as I built my, the intensity of my program, starting at base where I wasn't much over 80% of max heart rate, I was learning to nose breathe at that level. And as I upped the intensity of the work, I also, my body got used to the increased intensity of more CO2. And when I went out and did that race, Apart from the first five to ten minutes where we take off fairly quickly, I actually um, nose breathed the entire race. So once I'd settled after about 10, 15 minutes, I was pretty much entirely nose breathing the whole way. And I got to about an hour and a half both times I did that race. And I felt absolutely fantastic. And I was a sprinter when I was a kid, so I wasn't a great endurance athlete. And I felt absolutely fantastic. And I just took off and had a, a great second part of the race and ended up you know, so nose breathing, that's one of the examples of how nose breathing is, can work as it makes you far more efficient. And I just found that was different for me to finish a race like that, where I, in both times I came home like a train was, well, that's new. And, um, you know, it wasn't like I um, limited my performance. I still came in the top 10 of, of, of that field overall. Um, and so I was, that was an experience that I had with it. And I've since worked with athletes a, a fair bit doing this. And we found the same sort of things is that you recover quicker, you're far more efficient, so you often you, you'll come home harder, um, you can be far more relaxed, uh, and, and there's a variety of other benefits, which we'll talk about in part two of, of this answer to how do I breathe when I'm exercising. So that'll do for today, but it, it, it is actually far more efficient to learn how to nose breathe when you're exercising. And look, initially, if you're having to go to higher levels before you've learnt how to tolerate nose breathing at higher levels then if you have to use your mouth absolutely but just recover using your nose thanks